Hi everyone, Fide Master Dennis Montecrucis here, and today I'm going to uh, revisit a topic of an opening that I looked at in the context of one of my games about 14, 15 months ago. So there was uh, a game in this very sharp line of the Tarash, the uh, the so-called Von Hennig Shara Gambit, where I had white and survived, but it was a fairly harrowing experience. So today I want to take a look at um, some lines in this and, and some games I had with black. Uh, in this this variation. So I, I played this with Black many, many years ago, and after my adventures in the game, um, like I said, about 14, 15 months ago, I decided at least to try this out in Blitz uh, every now and then. So I'm I'm not sure that I want to play this in tournaments, in part because you're committing yourself, of course, with, with these two moves <clears throat> to certain opening choices, and of course the guy can play knight to f3, and certainly there's nothing wrong with Black's position there, but you have to decide... If, um, if if your repertoire, your regular repertoire, wants to head in that direction. So as a blitz thing, I don't mind. And um, anyway, I've had some fun when I've had the chance to play this. Though a lot of people do play Knight F3 and uh, simply simply avoid this this tricky business altogether. And, and if many players also play Knight F3 because they want to head for a Catalan after... I mean, of course, you can play C5 and it's a Tarish, but... Most people are expecting knight f6 in reply, and then you get a lot of Catalans with g3, as I said. Okay, so uh, again, unless you're playing for the Tarash. All right, so knight c3, c5, cd, cd, and here there are two ways of getting to the same thing. So there's uh, queen takes d4, which is the straightforward way. Black has knight to c6 here, taking advantage of the pin. Queen goes back, takes, queen comes back again. Bishop to d7, knight f3, knight f6. Okay, so that's one way. Um, second way is with queen a4 check. All right, so this takes away the knight to c6 pin idea, but black gets bishop to d7 in for free. So it amounts to the exact same thing. All right. So from here, white has two moves. The, uh, the, the main move is queen to d1, but... Occasionally you'll see queen to b3, and I've had several grandmasters play this against me. Against this, the best way to respond is with bishop to e6. And now white has a choice. Okay, um, if white is playing to fight, knows what, what he's doing, you'll see queen to a4. And then after this, both bishop to c5 and bishop to b4 are, are quite good. Uh, they, they should give black full compensation for the pawn. And of course you'll have to work out the details, but... Basically, black is okay. Uh, on queen takes b7, white has absolutely nothing, but unfortunately, uh, black has nothing nothing more than a draw if white plays correctly. So knight to b4, and now white has two ways of unfortunately forcing a draw. So the threat is knight to c2 mate, uh, so white obviously has to do something to prevent that, either by defending against it or by creating his own trouble. So the defensive way is knight to d4. Now, if queen takes d4, queen a8 check, and um, it's probably not going to be uh, good enough for for white. Although I, I suppose it, it it deserves a look. Somehow it looks a little bit fishy in there, but it um, I don't think it quite works. So the draw is just rook to b8. Queen takes a7. Uh, again, if queen takes d4, there's queen b8 check. So the rook goes back, and we draw by repetition that way. Though I suppose, I don't know, I'm, I'm really tempted to uh, to look at things like um, queen takes d4. I mean, I'm sure it doesn't work, but but it's it at least um, looks looks suspicious. Maybe, maybe it deserves to be examined uh, with some care. All right, well, anyway, if that doesn't work for white, then queen to b5 check does. So bishop to d7, queen e5 check, and black uh, just doesn't quite have enough here. So if something like bishop to e7, white plays knight to d4, and then a3, and he's okay. And he's up two pawns. So bishop to e6 is forced. So that way on knight to d4, you have queen takes d4. So just to illustrate this, for those who are, aren't used to this uh, trick, and black regains the uh, the queen and ends up a piece ahead for two pawns, which here should be enough to win or at least be much better. 
All right, so queen to b5 check with the repetition is forced. Again, if black tries to avoid it with something like this, then knight to d4 and a3. And um, maybe, maybe black will regain one of the pawns after bishop takes d4, a takes b4. But he's two pawns down here, so even then he'll be much worse. So this is unsatisfactory. Black needs to accept the repetition. But, you know, I, I haven't never faced this, so I, I wouldn't really be too worried about it as a practical possibility. All right, anyway, so that's queen to b3. Again, queen a4 is the, uh, the feistier move, but black should be fine after either bishop c5 or bishop to b4. Okay, so to the main move, which is queen to d1. Now, bishop to c5, e3, queen e7, bishop e2, castles, castles, g5. Okay, uh, knight takes g5 is, is kind of a, a suicide approach after rook h to g8. Black's attack is going to pr proceed very rapidly um, against the white king. The old-fashioned move was a3, preparing b4, but one fine day, I'm not sure how long ago, people realized, who cares? b4, let's just get on with it. And if black takes, then, hey, we've got the open b file, and that's going to be quite useful. So bishop takes b4 is indeed the uh, normal move, but black actually has a little finesse, which I think he can do free of charge. So that finesse is g4, and this was the move that surprised me way back uh, when in that, that earlier game from 2009. So the right move here is knight, take, knight to d4, and after this, uh, black has nothing better than bishop takes b4 with immense complications. Perhaps white is better there, but not much, and I'm not positive about it. I mean, it's, it's very, very complex. So g4. Now, um, as I said, knight to d4 is right, but b takes c5 just looks ridiculously obvious, and this is what I played in that earlier game. G takes f3, bishop takes f3, and white's up two pawns. He's got the bishop here. Uh, he has the idea of knight to b5 followed by knight to d6 check, which looks devastating. And if black takes on c5, well, that opens up the uh, the c file. So that doesn't look very appetizing either. So I, I just thought, well, you know, gee, maybe my my opponent kind of got his move orders mixed up or something. Uh, I, I didn't know. Uh, and then he played knight to e5. And then I had to think and think and think and think and think, and uh, it proved quite difficult. So, um, as I said, I won that game, but it was it was pretty pretty um, dramatic. And in fact, there's one place where maybe he, he even had a win with with correct play. So, um, what should White do here? Well, I, I think White, frankly, is uh, almost in uh, trouble here. Probably the very best that White can do is Bishop to e2. So rook h to g8, threatening bishop h3 or bishop c6, queen c2. And white should just pitch the exchange here. And now black can take on c5, but white plays bishop to a3. And the bishop is immune because of knight to b5 check. So it discovers check, and then the queen drops. So queen c6, threatening mate as well, over on h1. So king g1, king b8. And this is an unclear position. So white's got the bishop here, <coughs> excuse me, and a pawn for the exchange. So certainly has good compensation, but um, black's not really hurting either. Knight to f3 check will at least get rid of one of the bishops. That's an idea. That's on the, uh, the table here. Rook to c8 might be another possibility. So I think, again, both sides have, have their trumps here. I, I'm not really sure that uh, I can say either side is, is better. But certainly it's a good, tough fight here. All right. Well, so what else can white do? Now, I had one game where white played bishop to a3. And, okay, it's, it's logical. It develops. It protects the c-pawn. It maybe threatens c6. Maybe, maybe not. But it, it basically disregards black's ideas. So a uh, quick little tactic here. How should black to move... Um, finish this off. So this was one of my one of my blitz games that ended pretty quickly, where I had black. Well, the obvious move is the right move here, bishop to c6, threatening the queen, threatening to take on f3. 
So queen e2. Okay, what's the follow up here? I took with the knight, and now rook checks, and now it should be pretty easy to find, I think, I hope. Rook to d2, and my opponent resigned because, well, um, if the queen does anything about the attack from the rook, moves away or just takes the rook, then bishop takes f3 is mate. So that takes care of bishop to a3. So the main move here, <clears throat> excuse me, is knight to d5. Now, in uh, in the game where I had white, my opponent played knight takes d5, which isn't bad, but it's it's not the best move. So white probably maintains a, a little advantage there. So the best move is knight takes f3 check, queen takes f3, knight takes d5, queen takes d5. And now the uh, the key move here for black is rook h to g8. Um, I remember during the game, my, I, I focused my analysis on bishop to c6, and I'll, I'll discuss that later, but first, um, I, I want to talk about this. So this is the, the best move here, threatening bishop to h3. Okay, so what is, what is white to do about this? It's not so easy. Perhaps his best try is queen to f3, and the idea is that now if bishop to c6, queen h3 check, and then white has time for f3. But black has uh, a very nice way of proceeding here. It doesn't win, but it, it's, uh, it gives him an advantage. So see if you can figure out what black to move should do here. So the right move here is bishop to g4. This way, if the queen goes to f4, now we have bishop to h3. Okay, but what if the queen goes to g3? So this is the, uh, the tougher line. So now if bishop to e2... Queen h3 check, and then the rook can save itself. Well, the answer is this quiet move, queen to e6. And now black is much better, threatening bishop to h3 and bishop to e2 both. So black is going to win an exchange and, and have the favorable position to boot. Okay, so queen f3, while it might be best, um, isn't really that great for white. All right, but I had a, a recent game where my opponent played queen d6. This is not best, but how do we refute this? There are a lot of promising looking options here for black, but what's the very best one? Well, g2 is certainly the, the square we're looking at, and a move like rook takes g2 is, is very, very natural. Rook g2, king g2, bishop c6 check. And, and the queen drops off. But after f3, um, I'm not really sure that it's that fantastic for me. Probably black is better, but um, it's not, not entirely clear. And there's a much more clean-cut way for black to win. And the answer is bishop to c6. So this is very strong. Okay, well, white clearly has no choice if he wants to uh, make black prove it. Um, obviously... Defending g2 just gives black um, the chance to take the queen. So queen takes e7 is the only principled move. Okay, rook takes g2 check, king h1. And now which discovered check with the rook, with the, uh, well, which rook move um, should we make? Which What's the right discovered check here? Well, it's not rook to g3 check because then f3 or even e4 is just fine for, for white. Likewise, if rook takes f2 check, then e4 again saves the day for, for white, and of course he's up uh, quite a bit of material too, so he should probably be winning there. The right move is rook to g1 check, and that's the, uh, that's the knockout blow here. King takes g1, rook to g8, and it's mate next move. So this is a, a very nice trick, and it didn't take me very long to find this, in, in a recent game against a, a poor IM victim. And the reason it didn't take me very long is because I, I found this during the game that I mentioned back in, from back in 2009, except it was in, in this context that I found it. So I was looking at bishop to c6. So this was back here. So after knight to e5, I, I calculated this variation, among other lines. Knight e5, knight f3, queen f3, knight e5, queen d5, bishop c6, queen f5, check, 
king b8, bishop to b2, rook h to g8, queen e5 check, and then I had the, uh, the presence of mind to think of king a8, queen takes e7, rook g2 check, king h1, and after thinking for a few seconds, you know, looking at rook f2 and rook g3 and all the rest of it, I realized that, hey, rook to g1 check, king takes, and rook to g8 is mating. So the exact same trick. And um, so that made it, of course, uh, much easier for me to find it in the uh, slightly different context of, of the game. Now, about this variation, so you might think, well, why not play bishop to c6 instead of rook h to g8? Well, the answer is that after queen f5, king b2, uh, first of all, f3 is much better than bishop to b2, and this gives um, gives white a big advantage. And even after bishop to b2, rook h to g8, bishop to e5 check is good. And, uh, and then the bishop can retreat to g3. Or even after queen e5 check, king a8, of course, we don't take the queen, but play g3. And this is playable as well. So that's why rook h to g8 is better than bishop to c6. We, we give the rook, the uh, sorry, the bishop still the option of going to various squares, maybe even in some cases to b5, uh, certainly to c6 and h3. So we, we do this first. Rook h to g8 is almost always going to be part of the program anyway, but which bishop move ought to be made? Well, that we can wait and see. It, it, it may vary. So this is, um, I think, a, a very useful principle, not only in terms of this, this specific opening, but in general, that when you have a, cho a choice between two moves, often one of them is going to uh, to, to give you uh, more options than the other. So uh, always be aware of that. So here, rook h to g8, that's going to be played pretty much no matter what. The bishop has different possibilities, and so it's it's worth seeing. In fact, as we saw, even bishop to g4 is still another idea. So it's not just um, even h3 and c6 or b5, but even g4 as well. Okay, so uh, this hopefully will kind of whet your appetite for this. Again, you've got to bear in mind that white does have his uh, his ways of deviating. Of course, knight f3 is the big one. Um, queen to b3 is also an important one, but this one is, is quite interesting too. It's not not uh, not so so dull, but you know you'll get this this uh, every so often. All right. Now again, what you need to, to study if you play this is after g4. Okay, you need to know knight to, to d4, bishop takes b4, and again this leads into tremendous complications. But one ones where I think black is uh, is okay with with um, best play. So if you're well prepared, you can play this and uh, and play it against anyone. So I, I think this is this is a, a line that's very unpleasant for white to meet, unless white has done really a lot of specific preparation, and and knows it down cold. And even then, I mean, you have to uh, you have to be very tactically adept to uh, to handle this. So give it a try, at least if you're in the market for something against 1d4 and you, you like to play sharp lines. I, I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. So thanks a lot. See you next week. Bye-bye.